All right, congratulations. We have gone through our first assignment. So now for our second assignment, it keeps rolling. We're going to build on those skills. And you'll see we have a PDF of a composite creature. So we're going to make a fantasy creature now, doing the same techniques we did to make the, um, the fantasy landscape. And you can make any kind of fantasy creature you like, as long as you're doing it from head to toe. We're going to see the whole thing on just a blank background. But one fun challenge can be that you can base it on a Pokemon design. And so here I have a little Pokédex link. And the beauty of Pokemon, and they keep designing them, is that the best ones have just a really clear silhouette. And so this one, for instance, Pineco, you can squint really hard. <laughs> and see that all this is, is about the shape. Right? And you can also see the inspiration, so pine cones, right? But if you were to try to make this into a believable creature in the real world, and that's what we're gonna try to do, it's fun to get inspired just by a clean silhouette. You know, the idea of something is, it can be pretty simple, even though it can take a lot of different animal traits you know, to bring it together. So I'm kind of in love with this one. I've never looked at pillow swine before. So what I'm going to do is just drag that into my assignment two folder. This is an inspiration. So I've got pillow swine there. And I might drag another one in too. So you can use two or three Pokemon to inspire you. I like those tusks just coming out of nowhere. Oh, and then I've never really noticed this one. So many. And I like these kind of big hands and those proportions. I'm going to maybe take that one over. And I'm not thinking too deeply about this. This will get me started. All right. So... If I go back to the assignment sheet, we are using at least five reference images to blend together to form a convincing hybrid of different animals blended into one. So the, the Greek mythology term for this is chimera, and a creature can mean any sort of animal or living thing, and you don't need to limit your reference to only organic materials. So this could be some sort of cyborg, some sort of machine living thing hybrid, but it shouldn't only be a machine. We're going to use a lot of the same skills we used for our landscape, except this time it's going to be focused around something that has anatomy, has an internal structure that's able to move, so that we have the option to animate it and move it later, so its jaw can move, so its neck can move, so its arms can move, its tail can move, that kind of thing. Now this is a set of slides that you might get uh, inspired by. This is this was from a presentation by a previous student. And you're going to be doing this yourself for your own presentations, showcasing the work. But this is a guy named R.J. Palmer, who actually is a digital artist that just specializes in inventing kind of digital models and making believable creatures. And he actually builds them, like a lot of fantasy creature designers do, from the skeleton up. So really knowing anatomy and structure. Now we don't have time to learn full anatomy and structure for all the different animals out there. It's, it's not a creature design class. But what we can do is know enough about it to be informed and, and make better work. So I'm going to show you that with our sketching. And why I, I included this presentation is because he's most well known for doing his own kind of realistic versions of Pokemon. So he makes a structure, uh, sometimes out of just uh, pipe cleaners, right? In order to kind of pose and know what the skeletal structure is, and then we'll build the anatomy on top of that. But let's see, this is, these are just some of his sketches for his realistic Bulbasaurs, right? 
and then he can turn them into you know full digital artwork and the key is that the silhouette is inspired by the simple pokemon right but he has to have a full sense of how the anatomy would work and then he's using real world examples like um, horned lizards to make it work in reality same thing with charizard same thing with this guy And it's all about being, you know, well, well organized. And then if you design this stuff well, it can be made into, you know, a full character. It can move, it can interact, it can be in any environment. Think Space Jam, right? Or, or Detective Pikachu. Um, it doesn't matter if the aesthetics match as long as the creature can believably move in that world. So that's what we're going for. And then assignment three is going to be taking your creature and putting it into your fantasy landscape. So at the same time, I don't want you to design the creature specifically for your fantasy landscape, right? They're each separate portfolio pieces and you want them each to be satisfied. So what do we do? Well, let's look at this past student example. Once you have some examples of Pokemon, you wanna just think of their silhouette, right? And then you wanna, inspired by the silhouette you want to try to put it together into a sketch and that sketch will be your blueprint for how you map different references together and it has a lot to do with the anatomy and again it does not need to be based on pokemon but that's a fun kind of shortcut way to get you there So we have to learn how to do these sketches. And they're really useful whether they're whether you have a lot of drawing practice or not. We need to understand how to get the anatomy as our blueprint. So let's get started. So pretend I am using a sketchbook. I'm going to do it all in Photoshop. And I am going to first look at these inspiring Pokemon. And I'm just digitally sketching here. Yep, this will work. And I might bring these over into my sketchbook. Just gonna shrink them down. So I have them to reference. They're references for shape first and foremost, but then also for textures and different ideas, right? Okay, so some things I can do. I'm gonna rasterize both of these. I'm gonna duplicate them. This is just for demo purposes, but you can kind of do this in your own mind, right? And then I'm gonna take the levels and make them silhouettes. Ah, get the right contrast. You know, I have a better way. What I like about these Pokédexes is they make it really easy to select the space around. All right, so I just delete that. And then I can just do Select the space around, select the inverse, and then fill it with black. So that's the silhouette. This other one. Same thing, select the space around, delete it, invert the selection. Oh, can't quite do that. Now invert the selection, and then fill it with black. All right, so living creatures, now I have to sketch. They have a head, right? And that's usually where you're gonna start. And most heads are circular. So I'm gonna start with a circular head. Then I wanna see, well, which way is the head facing? So I do what are called action lines. Let me change color really quickly for these. So in blue, I'm gonna show, okay, I like how the head is facing this way. 
and the eyes are maybe there for that creature. And then the head is facing this way and the eyes are there for that creature. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep my action line for my creature like this. Okay. Which would mean the eyes might go like here and here. I don't know how big they are yet. But that's my head and that's the direction of my head. So next, what do I have? I have a spine. And the spine has to flow from the head. And the spine can be a curvy spine, it can be a straight spine, but it has to hang certain structures. So that spine is going to need a rib cage. And I'm looking at these different ones and I see this rib cage and I'm thinking, okay, maybe something about this big if that spine is running back. And then I can use action lines again and say, okay, that rib cage is in this direction. So the ribs are kind of running along like that. Then you need a pelvis. And the pelvis goes underneath the rib cage. His pelvis is way up here, and that's what I kind of like. I'm going to put a pelvis up high. It makes for an interesting silhouette. And I'm just sketching. You can sketch as many of these as you like. Okay, how can I be inspired by this one? Well, I like these kind of flippers, right? Where do those come from? Well, those come from a collarbone which is at the top of the rib cage, and you have shoulder joints here and here. Notice how I'm drawing through. I'm like treating it like an x-ray. Just because the head is covering that up, I still draw it. And then I'm going to say, okay, how can I make that work? Well, I need a forearm and an upper arm. And then I need these kind of flippers. These big shapes. And it looks like it's circular, and it comes out. And maybe they look kind of like this. I can erase and refine my sketch. I can also, because it's digital, I can increase my canvas size. <laughs> so I can make the hand shape whatever I want. So let's try that again. I don't need to use that position of the hand, but I'm looking at that kind of silhouette and shape. So maybe I want a shorter forearm or shorter uh, upper arm, really short forearm, and then kind of flippers that are like that. And I think, okay, what does that look like on this side? Forearm. like that. Okay. If I switch colors to see what's in the foreground, now I can look at the head again. So the heads, in character design, heads should never be just one shape. Characters, Pac-Man has one shape for the head, it works. But beyond that, you need at least two shapes. So what does he have? Well, he's got tusks and he's got a nose. So that's a second shape. That second shape might go here. And then the third shape, those tusks, might go here and here, and I might want to make them stronger. And that might be interesting. I might want a totally different kind of nose. But right now, I'm liking that. Um, a mistake is to try to get too much stuff in, right? So what about the top of the head? I can just cover everything with fur, right, and hide everything. But I, what I like about this character is that little fin at the top. So I'm going to put that there, this little kind of bone ridge. I like that. And then I also like this little skirt he has at the back. So I'm going to put that in. But then for the rest, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with the, um, the back of the body. I like that that's not even handled here. I like it's a strong choices of what we're looking for. I like that it just goes right down to fur, like nothing else. So the last thing you do for your sketch is you start thinking, okay, what are these components? And I'm thinking, well, this is buffalo or bison. And I might sketch that in. My pin wasn't lagging. You know, and this might be walrus. 